I'm Dr. Valerie Ballister. I am the Executive Director of the University Writing Center. I am an English professor with a specialization in rhetoric and composition, in other words, in writing. I was thinking about it before today. I've been on at least 60 and probably 75 defenses, and not all in English. In English, in education, in linguistics, and then also in engineering, in architecture. We used to have to have somebody from outside your department sitting on each dissertation <laughs> defense as what they called a, a graduate committee uh, reviewer to make sure that the process went smoothly. So I did that for, for many different uh, areas. I think uh, and many in the sciences and engineering. So I'm very confident about, about the structure of a dissertation defense. But I, I'm wondering what you know about the structure of a dissertation defense. Anything that you know at all about it that you can tell me? What do you think happens in that little room? They go into a, you go with your committee into a little conference room usually, right? Sometimes it's open to the public. And sometimes, I mean, technically it's always open to the public. But whether you announce it to the public or not is going to determine whether people come or don't come. And in my, in my department in English, it's not customary for the public to ever attend. If it's open to the public, there is a point at which they will leave and you will be sitting alone with your committee. So, what you're doing here is you have to muster up all of your confidence now. This is about confidence, okay? It's very important. And you have to present yourself as a scholar in the discipline and authority on your subject. You have to show them what you have to offer as a scholar. And that's really what it's about. Nervousness is probably the biggest problem, but I've seen all of them work through it. I've never seen anyone fail. And I've only seen one person ever fail a dissertation in all of those defense. Only one person didn't pass. So your odds, one out of 60, your odds are good you're going to pass. So go in there with that impression. The person who didn't pass wasn't prepared and didn't, hadn't worked, hadn't talked to his committee beforehand. So you are most likely going to pass this. Um, you're going to be expected to clearly and cogently explain your work and explain how your work fits in with your discipline. Where's your place in this big conversation that's going on in your discipline? What have you contributed to the field? Because a dissertation is supposed to be an original contribution to knowledge. What have you contributed to the field? What more needs to be done? That's the kind of thing they're interested in. So it's not really a grilling. In your head, I want you to turn it from a grilling. Because it really, I've never seen one that is a grilling. And the word grilling means where they put you on the grill and cook you till you're finished. It means where they ask you, this, 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 tell me this. Do you know this? Do you know that? You know, where they, they just ask you lots of questions like a big, it's usually not that. It's usually a conversation among equals. They're trying to see if you can function as an equal with them now. It's their first opportunity to say, you are now an equal. Please come in and give me some information. But as an equal, I expect you to be able to explain your ideas, defend your ideas, tell me where your ideas fit in, because they expect it of each other. They're not asking you to do anything that they don't do with each other. And that's why you shouldn't worry if they suddenly stop talking to you and start talking to each other. That's a good sign, actually. That means that you've stimulated their brains. And this is what these people live for. They're academics. And they like that. Sometimes they get into arguments with each other. It's not, it's OK. And your chair should gently bring that back. If your chair doesn't do it, just let it go. Let it happen. If they disagree with you, they expect you to come back with a defense. And that's where the word defense comes from. So you need to know what the rules are. Uh, have, have a talk with your advisor and find out. What's, what, if you don't know now, you can talk to other students, but you definitely need to talk to your advisor a good while before the defense and say, I would like to know what to expect. Can you explain to me how a defense happens in our department? What is the usual thing that happens? What do you want from me as your candidate? And then know your committee as well. Sometimes when we work on a dissertation, we get isolated from our committee. Make sure that the committee gets the dissertation in plenty of time. That's something your advisor can tell you. If, if you give it to them two weeks before, they'll probably read it the night before. And then any objections they have, 
they didn't have a chance to tell you about. So if you can give it to them like a month before, even more, you can work that out with your advisor, but the sooner they get it, the more time they have to respond to it and to let you know before the defense, where are their areas of concern? If you go in then and meet with them, but do get your, um, I think you should get your committee chair's advice and permission before you go meet with all your members. But when you do that, they even sometimes tell you what question they're going to ask you. Or maybe they'll give you a hint about what question, because they'll tell you, what concerns me about your work is this. What I like about your work is this. I see this, but did you do that? And then when they read it again, their minds are going to go back, oh, we had a conversation. We talked about this. I'm going to, that's the question I'm going to ask. Because when I'm a committee member and I'm sitting there on the hot spot and I have to ask an intelligent question, I'm going to go back to what I remember most about your dissertation. Now, the first thing you should be able to do is answer the question, tell me about your dissertation. This will come in handy on the job market as well. So, in your head, write a speech, just a brief speech. And you can break it up so that you're basically repeating what's the information in your abstract. This is the question or problem that led me to research. This is the method I used, the way that I decided to, um, to deal with that. I should have added method in here. This is what I found. And I put thesis separate from here. Thesis is really, what is my hypothesis? This is the problem, and this is what I think is going to happen. And then this is what I found happened. In the humanities, we're going to call it a thesis. In sciences, we might call it a, a, a hypothesis, right? But I had a question. Here's how I thought it would be answered, and here's how it actually was answered. And then this is the significance of my work, how it can be applied, what, what it means for the profession, how it changes our theories, how it changes our practices whatever the significance might be. And don't forget to bring a copy of the dissertation with you to the, um, to the meeting because people will surely, usually the committee brings their own copy. Again, that's a thing you want to check with in your own department. Will they bring their copies or do I have to provide copies for everybody? But usually they bring their own copies and they'll say, on page 55 you said blank, 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 blank. Explain it then you need to have page 55. So you need your own copy minimum. Try not to wait till the last minute. The sooner they get intake, if it's not finished, say, here's what I have so far. Just put a deadline date and say, I don't have everything finished, but here's what I have so far. That gives them the opportunity to respond and you'll know. And they are going to say, oh, but you don't have this. And then you're all working on it. It's coming. So you'll be ready to answer about it. So you have to practice. Just like your little girls doing ballet, you need to practice. So write down, just so you have it in your head, how I would answer the question, tell me about your dissertation. And then practice it. Practice in front of a mirror. Say it out loud. Don't memorize it because you want to be agile. If somebody interrupts you, you want to remember where you are. You don't want it to be just rote. You want to be able to say it even in a few different ways. But you want to be able to, to say that. You, you get so focused on what you're doing, you want to talk about the details. And you forget that other people don't even know what, what question you're trying to answer. What brought you to the research interests people? What's the problem? How did you approach the problem? What did you think you were going to find? What did you find? And what does all this mean? Of course, you want to dress for success. And you want to stay calm. And you want to smile. It's important not to be too serious. To show that do this. And you can do this. Remember, the success rate is high. In some fields, it's optional to present. In some fields, it's always done. First is prepare for technical difficulties. If I came in here today and this was not working, I have my hand out so I could use that. Um, make, for yourself, if your slides are reminding you what to say, make note cards or make a copy of your slideshow so you see every slide so you can follow along. Be ready for technical difficulties. It could be that you are in a room where there is never a failure and the electricity goes out that day. And you have worked a month to get all these people into the same room at the same time. It's not easy to schedule a defense. 
because every professor has a different schedule and they're all very busy. So you're going to have it even though the electricity is out, okay? So, so be ready. <laughs> um, consider handouts. You don't want to give everybody lots and lots of handouts just to give out handouts because the, you don't want them looking at the handout. You want them looking at you. You want them looking at your slides. So make sure your handouts are only used to present things that can't go on a slide. It can't fit on the slide or things that you really want them to remember. Maybe it's a photograph or an illustration. Maybe it's a chart or a graph. Maybe it's a quote. But whatever it is, should be things you want them to take away with them to remember to be very vivid or things that is hard to put on a slide. Find out how long that usually the presentation is. Typically, they're 8 to 10 minutes. In many cases, you're going to need time for questions. In other cases, no, because you're just presenting to the committee, and that's just what they're going to do. They're going to start with questions as soon as it's, it's over. So find that out, from your, again, from your advisor. Ask, how much time do I have to do a presentation? Do I have a public audience? If I do have a public audience, shall I get, how much time should I give them for questions? It's usually five minutes for questions about approximately. So if they say you have 10 minutes total, it's five to talk, five for questions. We have a handout in the Writing Center called Designing Effective Presentation Slides. and It's under oral communication, so I suggest you look at that. You want to be sure you don't put too many words on a slide. Make sure your slides basically cover your main points, but that people are looking at you as much as they're looking at the slides. The slides help them if they lose their place. The slides emphasize your main points, but they should be listening to you, not just reading the slides. So I, I recommend the handout of designing effective presentation slides. But I'll tell you how to divide your presentation, how to organize it. It's the same thing I told you to memorize. The problem or questions that led to your research, your methods for answering the question or solving the problem, your major findings, the implications, significance, or applications of your findings. And add to that your next step in your scholarly career. They'll be interested. If, they, if you don't say, they'll probably ask at least. They might want to know if you've applied for any jobs. But when I'm talking about your scholarly career, I'm talking about in your, your research part. What will you research next? Will this dissertation lead to articles? Will it lead to a book? Will it lead to another grant, another research program? So where will this take you from here? The chair will probably say, OK, we are going to ask you to leave the room. They're just deciding. What, what procedures will be followed so that everybody agrees on the procedures? If they're going to be allowed to interrupt each other with a follow-up question, or they have to each wait their turn, that's all they're deciding now. And next thing they're going to do is have you come back in, and your, your chair will tell you, OK, we're, this is what we're going to do. We're going to start with Dr. Ballister. And now, Dr. Ballister has to sound very smart and give a real a good question, right? And sometimes in the process, in her head, she's still forming the question. So she may ramble on a bit. And that's why you have to listen. Listen, really focus. Don't be thinking about what I'm going to say next. Listen to what they're saying now. Because then she's going, well, in chapter 3, you did blah, 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 blah. And in chapter 7, you said, and then there's a contradiction here. But I kind of think that if we bring in so-and-so scholar, this might resolve the contradiction. And, blah. and she's going on and on. And you're like, and you want to know what? What is your question? And she might say, and what do you think of that? So you have to be listening. <laughs> Listen closely. Now, you don't know what she said, so what do you do? Ask her to clarify or repeat the question. Or you clarify. You say, I think I heard you ask, is that correct? OK. So now what happens when you don't know the answer? <laughs> OK. So you have lots of options when you don't know the answer. But I came up with a few options. You ask me whether I think that this is a regular phenomenon. I'm not sure. But I think. 
So you don't have to go, yes, it's a regular phenomena. <laughs> no, it's not a regular phenomena. You can say, I'm not sure. But take a stab at the answer. Try to answer. And let them see your thought process. That's what they're doing for you. They're letting you see their thought process when they're going on and on and on. So you do the same thing. They want to see that you can think. That's what they're looking for. Can you think? Is this a regular phenomena? I don't know, but that question has interesting implications. <laughs> for example, if I knew the climatic changes in August, then knowing that would help me do this. Keep yourself focused on your, your data. You are the expert, OK? On your data, on your project, on your ideas. You are the expert. And they're actually trying to treat you like the expert. And they want you to answer like the expert, OK? They respect you, believe me. There's never any perfect data. Okay. So the doubts are saying, oh man, if I only could have done this. Right. So that's good to talk about. Be confident, however. Say, given the constraints I was working with, this was what I was able to do. But if I could do more, if I, you know, this is my dream, if I could really have done this. Or in doing this, I learned a problem with this kind of data collection. Next time, I'm going to do it this way. Is it OK to just say, I don't know? It's OK. If you really don't know, this may be a little better. It's better to say, I don't know, than to fake it. The thing you don't want to do is fake it. Because these are not people that will be fooled. So don't fake it, that's all. Sometimes when they ask the questions, and they're coming, and they're coming, and you're trying to listen, <coughs> you need a little time. You can slow things down. You can slow things down by pausing, take a breath, Look at your notes, even state. And do you think this is a regular phenomenon? I need a little time to answer that. Can I just have a minute to gather my thoughts? They'll always say yes. Don't take three minutes, but just a few seconds. Maybe at that point, maybe look down so that you're not distracted by them. Focus, focus, OK, I can answer this question. Boost your confidence, and then go for it. Another thing is to ask them to repeat the question, both when you don't understand the question and when you need a little time. Maybe you did understand it, but you just want to slow things down. So if you've said something wrong, or you realize that you started answering a new question and suddenly, ooh, I should have said that too, uh, how do you handle that? Well, it's a good idea to just admit it. Oh, wait a minute. I, I'm wrong about that, aren't I? I? I realize that just now. And just correct yourself. Or you can finish answer the question you're on and then go, may I also add something else? I realized that when you asked me this, I answered, but I could have said something more. And just go ahead and say it. So you have the opportunity and you have the right to say, I want to say something more. I want to correct it. And thank you for that question. I w wish I had thought of that earlier. That's a really good point. So they end. They finished asking your questions. They ask you to leave again. Don't go too far. Go outside. Now you're really sweating. <laughs> Remember the odds. You're going to come back in, and they're going to say, congratulations. Now, we want you to rewrite the conclusion. However, you have passed. Okay, so just remember that it's very common that they will ask for revision. They did for me. In fact, one of my committee members said, Valerie, you know that conclusion just won't do. <laughs> That's okay, because I managed to pass the defense part. They knew I knew what I was talking about, but they knew that my writing fell down in the hardest part. The, the conclusion is usually the hardest part, where you have to think about the significance and fit it into the, all the literature that you've done. and all, you know. So it's very common for that part. Or it could be that you have some tables that aren't in the right format. Or it could be something else they noticed, that some problem that they thought that you just didn't quite capture. Sometimes you said something in the defense that they want you to put into the dissertation. Usually when you come back into the room and they say you passed, but we want you to make the revisions, they expect your chair to keep notes. And he or she will actually make sure you make the revisions. However, if that's not, you could also 
suggest at that point, when they say we're going to need revisions, you can ask them, could you please summarize the major revisions you want to me to make so I can make some notes now? Now, whether each committee member is going to have to see those changes or not will also depend on what they decide with your chair. Many times they decide that the chair will be responsible for making sure those revisions are made and they don't have to see it again. But you know, they still have to sign your dissertation. So sometimes they'll sign it there. If you take your title page in with you, they'll sign it right there. And sometimes they won't sign it until they see those revisions. So that's another reason you go see your chair to find out how it's normally done. Uh, and other times, um, everything's fine. They don't even want any revision. And as I said, it's possible they will say you did not pass the defense. Knowing your material is extremely important. Don't go in there without having read your own work. You think you've read it because you wrote it, but you haven't read it, OK? Even if you finished writing it a week before, give yourself a little time and read it again. Practice will, uh, and knowledge of your topic will make you feel really confident. And remember, who, and positive self-talk, remember who you are. You probably know more about this topic than anybody. I can guarantee you know more about this topic than anybody, even more than your advisor. Okay, because that's what a dissertation is. It's going farther than your, your advisor can take you this far. You've got to go the rest of the way. And so hopefully, even, even though your advisor is going with you and following behind, y you really do know more if you, if you stop. Think a lot before you get there. Pre that's why you need the time to prepare it. Okay, read your dissertation though. I really appreciate that you came today. You can always reach me at the Writing Center as well. It's Valerie Ballister. And if you go to About the Writing Center, you'll see the staff directory and my email, OK? Thank so you. if I can give you some confidence, let me know. Thank you.